Hi there, I'm Andrew Taylor. I'm a faculty member in the Arts Management Program at American University, and I'm a blogger at The Artful Manager, which is at artfulmanager.com. Um, and here I'm testing out the idea of what I'm calling the concept test kitchen. Uh, it's a place where I can unfold some frameworks, some ideas, uh, some ways of approaching and breaking down complex things that I think might be useful to arts and cultural managers. Let's call them recipes. Um, we'll give, a, give them a quick try and you can observe and hear what they're about and then help me understand where and how they connect to your professional or um, your creative life or if they don't at all. It's one way of uh, the test kitchen part of this is I spin out a recipe, you give it a try in your own head or connect it to your own practice and then um, you comment back and we share a conversation about whether and how this might be a useful tool for you. Um, let's give you an example. So one comes from Otto Scharmer's book, Theory U, uh, and it's an idea that organizations have essentially three layers of attention where they can do improvement or focus on creating growth and opportunity and change. Um, and just to connect to some other theories, uh, most theories of human cognitive development, like what happens to your brain as you, you're a baby and you grow up into adulthood, uh, is we tend to begin as sort of a a pen that doesn't work. We tend to begin as a full, sort of undifferentiated blob. So when you're a baby, you don't know the difference between yourself and the world. Um, you think you are the world and the world is you. Uh, slowly you start to differentiate and say, hey, wait a minute, there's these people that keep coming in and they help me and they feed me. Perhaps they are separate from me. Um, you start to identify with more nuance how those people behave differently than you. By age three, you're starting to realize they actually think and experience different things than you. So a whole of cognitive development is about um, creating differentiation, which we'll talk about in another test kitchen. Um, so let's imagine the organization that way. So pe a group of people getting together and doing work um, in sort of an undifferentiated way, just they do the things that are in front of them to be done. Over time, they may start to understand, wow, we could actually improve if we create sort of different buckets of things and we behave differently in those buckets. So we might start thinking of a outer circle here, which is really about product or outcome. Let's call it product. That means any countable noun uh, that is part of the process of your business or part of the outcome of your business. So uh, money, uh, people that you hire, productions you've put on, brochures you've released, uh, budgets you've released, things you can count usually. We call these stocks in system theory. Um, and we actually do really well in this part of the world when we're looking at project products as if we're really clear on differentiation. So different categories of product might be HR, human resource product, could be financial management, uh, could be accounting, could be marketing. So we, exceed, we excel and we get better in the product layer of our attention when we create differentiation between things. And the way we improve is by doing variance analysis and say, well, we seem to be making 10% uh, of our widgets are bad, so we should improve things so that 5% of our widgets are bad. Uh, the work in this outer life is in the 1950s, 60s, 70s of corporate theory was about outcome output uh, improvement, um, variances and things like that. Then over time, you start to get a little more sophisticated. Either you get you nail these things down or you um, you just look to the next level is like that's not helping us as much as we'd like. And you might imagine then you differentiate yet another circle, this middle part of the donut, the middle of your attention span. Uh, and this would be a focus on process. So process would be the verbs, the ways, the ing words that associate with these outputs or products. So you may have people that you hired, but you had a process of hiring. Um, you might have accounts that you have and you have a process of accounting. Um, you have a market that you're serving and market outputs that you're doing through a process of marketing. Um, so ING, uh, process, verb, conversations live in this center area of your organizational attention. And here's where you'd see improvement around total quality management or workflow development or how do we improve the process? How do we make things better, which is this sort of center donut? Uh, making better things is our focus in the outer circle. Um, so Sharmer then talks about um, this is most of the history of, of corporate thought and theory, total quality management, more recently, 70s, 80s, 90s, aughts, uh, we're focusing on process. 
um, often with a connection to outputs, but really thinking about how do the processes work and how do we make our processes are better, because that means our work will be better all across. Uh, but often missing, according to Scheimer, is this middle part, which he would call the source. Uh, this is the place that all drive comes from, the reason people come to work, the pe reason people engage and are excited, the things that draw you in an internal way uh, or across a group of people in their collective belief and passion, um, the source. Um, so if these products were the stocks, the nouns, the buckets uh, that we can count things in, uh, the process is the pipe, it's the way things get into those buckets, and the source um, isn't the water, it's the well. It's the place where you go uh, that creates the drive and the connection and the passion around both the process and the product. Uh, and Scheimer talks about actually healthy organizations see this as a whole unit. It's not about, oh, that we all need to get to this middle circle. No, it's actually about creating an organization that breathes in and out. When it takes a deep breath, it's pulling its attention to the source. What makes us do this work? what calls us to do it well. Um, breathing out, we move to process and say, how are we managing the ways we do things, the verbs, the ING's, and b exhaling all the way, we might look out to the product and what can we learn about the things we're making or doing and improving what those are like. Um, and then breathing back in. Uh, so a, a healthy organization is not always getting stuck in this outer circle of attend attending to product and variance and counting and um, measuring things of countingness, made that up. Um, they're not necessarily dwelling all the time in process and doing workflow improvement until they go insane. Um, and even they're not always spending time at the source because just if you dwelled entirely about the wellspring, about why you're there, you don't actually get anything done. Um, so what I like about this model, and you can tell me if you like it in the test kitchen, um, is it helps sort of connect a lot of ways of thinking about an organization and recognizing it's one whole system. Um, so this is Otto Scharmer's, um, he calls it the 12 management functions. Uh, so he actually identifies 12 functions. And the thing he notices here is after we differentiate in the world, the cognitive development theory, the rest of our life is spent reintegrating. Uh, saying, well, actually, you know, now that we've understand outcomes in human resource, accounting, marketing, development, operations, production, front of house. Um, and now that we've spent some attention on the process, which shows these things are deeply interconnected, once we get back to the source, there is no difference. These things are just different dialects of the same source language. Um, and that's the, the other useful thing I find about this is it helps us know, you know, it's okay to be highly differentiated in how we talk about the outputs of our work it's okay to realize along the way that process crosses those disciplines and that's totally fine. We shouldn't be frustrated by this. And also to recognize that the source of it, it's all the same. Um, if we're talking about an arts organization, it's a group of people who are passionate about human expression, either preserving or presenting or curating or creating. Or um, There's a passion that is common and happens to manifest itself in different aspects of the enterprise. So there you go, that's a dry run, a first run of the Concept Test Kitchen. Um, let me know in the comments or through emails or through posts what parts of this resonate with you, what don't, if it makes no connection to you at all, or if you can think of specific examples that this calls to mind for you. The whole purpose of the Test Kitchen is to try out new recipes together and to see how they taste, what their nutritional value is, and whether or not they have any purpose and use in the world of the arts and cultural professional. Thanks for hanging in there.